What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and I want to share with you guys a prison related news story that I ran across just recently that I feel like is one of the craziest ones that I've... I always start these videos off saying that. It's always the craziest. But then again, I only focus on the crazy. What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today I want to share with you the craziest... Ah, it doesn't... What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show. This is the final time. I want to share with you guys a prison related news story that I just ran across that I think you guys are going to find pretty interesting. Never heard of anything like this. And really this is like getting in at Bitcoin at $10,000 and watching it jump to the moon. 58,000 the highest that it's gotten to. I literally was up $2,000 with Bitcoin and almost lost it all. Got out only up $100, but still, at least I didn't lose anything. But damn, man, I was up $2,000. There's this whole snatch and grab philosophy that I'm starting to realize about this crypto game, and I should have got out while the getting was good. Why am I talking about that? That's got nothing to do. Oh yeah, picture this. You're a D-boy, not a douche, but a dope boy. And you've got a girl, an old lady, potentially. I'm going to use my own personal self as an example starting this off. Back in my heyday, when I thought that I was the dope boy and I was getting money out there, which I most certainly was not, and I don't advise anybody to try to do it that way. I know Walter White makes it look cool. I know that movie Belly made it look cool, but folks, it is not cool because somebody is going to tell on you and your ass is going to get locked up. But back in my heyday, when that's the type of lifestyle that I was involved in, nowadays it's Bitcoin, <laughs> I didn't have nothing. No car, no driver's license back then. I mean, when you lost your license because of court fines or charges, they didn't make it easy at all for you to get your license back. It's a little bit easier these days, I think. But in situations like that, you're going to want to have you a girl who can provide things that you don't have. Maybe a vehicle that she'll let you borrow even though she knows you don't have a driver's license. Happened many times in my particular case. Hey, yo, let me borrow your car. Yeah, I know how to drive 100 miles an hour. You want a girl and you might even find yourself using people. And in my past, I definitely used people. I, I'm not proud of that, but that's the truth. Anyway, what the hell am I talking about me for? The story's got nothing to do with me. When you're in that type of a lifestyle, you want you a girl that can provide the things that you don't have. She's got a license, she's got a car, she's got an apartment, a place to live, a place for you to consider it as your, your stash spot, the trap, potentially. Maybe you want a girl who's in law enforcement. But regardless, you always want that girl to make a come up just as much as you want to make a come up for yourself because what's good for her is good for you. And like the saying goes, what's yours is mine. And what's mine is also mine, which is a horrible saying, but that's the way that you know some people will think we're in that type of a lifestyle. The reason I'm sharing all of this with you guys is because when you're in that type of a lifestyle, the most unbelievable ideal situation that could ever come from that is what I'm getting ready to share with you, revolving around a story with a headline that is as follows. Before you even comment, I know it took me forever to get to the point. I'm gonna try my damnedest to edit this in such a way that we just make that not so long of an intro. After bailing him out of jail four times, Powerball winner Marie Holmes is now being sued by her ex fiance. Now folks, there's a number of different headlines about this particular story, that, like a prisoner suing his ex fiance, like a guy in prison, because I believe he is in prison right now. But hear me again when I say that here's a dude who's in prison, who is not only suing his ex fiance, but yo, she was a what? A what? A Powerball winner for how much dough? Let's continue. Back in 2015, Marie Holmes was dating dope boy Lamar Hot Sauce. That's no bullshit. That's his nickname. Lamar Hot Sauce McDowell. And it was during this time, Lamar out there in the streets, Marie working five jobs. I believe there's a story that actually says when I read that, I was like, there ain't no way. How are you working five jobs at the same damn time? You must be getting a shift a day per job. Maybe you're working two shifts at two different jobs a day. But back in 2015, Marie would hit a Powerball lottery, which would be the largest winning in the state of North Carolina, I believe, where these folks are from... Yes, North Carolina, for $188 million 
dollars. Now, if you're anything like me, Bitcoin enthusiast, tax-paying American, you're probably thinking to yourself, first question that comes to your mind is, $188 million, how much of that is she getting after taxes? Well, I shit you not, she literally left out of this situation after hitting the lottery for $188 million with $87.9 million. This chick paid $100 million in taxes. Folks, I ain't no mathematician. I ain't no goodwill hunting. But that sounds like more than half. More than half. $87.9 million after taxes? Where the rest of that money going to? And don't even try to tell me no mother <laughs> road construction. I ain't trying to hear it. So here's the crazy thing. Hot sauce would end up getting locked up right around this time, shortly thereafter. Now, what's interesting is hot sauce had actually been indicted prior to Maria winning this exuberant lottery winning. He had been indicted on federal drug charges, I believe is what it was. He was out on bond. Marie would hit the lottery. During this time, Marie would hit the lottery, walk home with a cool $87.9 million, I believe is what it was, and she would spare no expense when it came to lavish and luxurious gifts for Lamar Hot Sauce McDowell. Yeah, this dude had a serious come up. The story would say, back in 2016, McDowell defended his then fiance's decision to repeatedly pay his bail, telling the Daily Mail, uh, bars, if I had that money, then I would do the same for her. Would you for real, though? You know, that's a question that is asked rhetorically in a lot of different situations, not just in the bail situation, but like, think about this, you get locked up, you want your girl to ride with you, yo girl, I know it ain't been 15 years, you know how fast that's gonna go by. But if she got 15 years, would you ride? Would you write? Would you cry? Would you stay up at night? Woo boy, where's a Starbucks? I'm ready to go get my spoken word on. I made all that up too, just to go ahead and leave a like on this video, cause Joby Nath, oh, I bit my tongue. Ah, you'll be nasty with the wordplay. I skimmed through the story real quick to try to find out how much his bail was. There's no mention of that. If anybody knows, please comment down below. People are just jealous because of how much she won and people want to see me locked in jail, McDowell would say. But somewhere along the lines, things went awry between Marie and Hot Sauce, which would ultimately lead to Lamar sitting in a federal penitentiary filing a lawsuit against his millionaire bazillionaire ex-fiance, Marie. Why, you may wonder, for what was he suing her for? And what also were those lavish and luxurious gifts Marie had bought for Hot Sauce? If you can't tell, I've been inspired just a little bit by our After Prison Show parody of Dateline, folks. There will be a new one of those coming in the very near future. Be on the lookout, like a police bolo. McDowell was claiming that during the same year, 2016, as he was preparing to begin a seven year prison sentence for 2014 drug trafficking charges, he decided to appoint Holmes as the agent of his assets. Mr. McDowell authorized Miss Holmes to store, maintain, and protect his real and personal property during his incarceration, the lawsuit reads. What items are we talking about? Well, there was a $250,000 modified Chevrolet Stingray Corvette, a quarter million dollar Corvette, $100,000 worth of clothes and jewelry. God, you couldn't invest in real estate or even Bitcoin. Back in 2014, had you jumped off a cliff for Bitcoin, oh, you'd be a bazillion gazillionaire by now. But wouldn't we all? A $600,000 auto restoration business along with other large purchases. Shorty girl was spoiling her man. And again, when you a D-boy out there in the streets, this is a D-boy's dream. You know, young ladies and women, they might fantasize and play house. D-boys, they do the same thing as well. When I find that perfect lady, she's gonna buy me a quarter million dollar Corvette $600,000 auto restoration business, $100,000 in clothes and jewelry. Yeah, she's out there, I know she's out there. And again, when this dude Hot Sauce got locked up, he made her basically the, what is that word? 
He basically gave her a power of attorney over all of his belongings. Now picture this, he's locked up. You know, it's often said that the worst time that you can do is when you're bidding and you got you a girl out there in the free world and you're worried about what she's out there doing. But in this particular case, I feel like that is so much more intensified because here's a dude who's got a bazillion gazillionaire fiance. He's left her in charge of all of his items, which seem to be worth easily about a million dollars. Gosh almighty, I can imagine he is definitely sweating that, stressing that. Yo, what you doing out there? Who is that in the background? That ain't no private jet. That ain't no private jet. That's not the pilot. Yeah, he's stressing this. He's stressing this shit big time. And something would go awry in their relationship. She would probably leave him. Like, yo, what am I doing with you? I'm a bazillionaire. I don't need you. You're locked up. You got seven years. That's like, that's like, that's like an eon. That, that's forever. So you would imagine that, okay, if the relationship goes awry, you know, you left the chick in control and in possession of the things that she bought for you. Okay, she goes her separate way. Yo, go ahead. Go, go be with, go be with Elon Musk. I don't care. Just leave my shit with my, with, leave my shit with somebody. But no, 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 she ain't, she ain't do none of that. Now, shorty girl snapped for real. The story goes on to say that in 2017, the couple would split. And as if that was not bad enough, McDowell, AKA Hot Sauce, had learned that Marie was out there dating other people. And maybe it was those other people she was dating who influenced her to do what she would do next. But not only did Hot Sauce learn that she was dating other people, he also learned that she was out there selling off those things that she had bought for him. Why? Again, here's a chick who's got $87.9 million. She ain't spent but a drop in the bucket on hot sauce. Was it a lover scorn? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorn. Was it just out of spite? Or did Jody tell her to do it? Gosh almighty, Jody is the devil for reals. Hot sauce was left with no choice but to sue. And sue he did. Claiming that in the months that followed, Holmes sold off what McDowell considered to be his own personal property. The items were some of the things she lavished on him. Is that how you use that word? Yo, I'm about to lavish all over. When they were together, including the items that we had talked about, the quarter million dollar Corvette, the $100,000 worth of clothes and jewelry, and the $600,000 auto restoration business. Now here's the real kicker. Even though this dude is suing, and even though, you know, he could potentially win this, I mean, these were gifts that were given to him. I've read reports that said that none of these items, none of these items, not the car, not the auto business, I mean, the clothes and the jewelry, I don't know how you would do this, but none of those items were ever titled to hot sauce. They were all in Marie's name. So if you try to take this shit before Judge Judy, oh God, you know Judge Judy gonna side with the woman. She always do, always do. Yeah, hot sauce, you hit. And you know, here's the real kicker to this whole situation. In prison, you can be anybody that you want to be. Can you imagine being hot sauce locked up? You go up in there telling all these war stories. Yeah, you know, I was out there nickel and diamond for real, but I had a quarter million dollar Corvette. I had me an auto restoration business. Bitch, this ain't no 5M server and no GTA RP. You ain't have that for reals out there. You wailing. Yo, dudes can be anything that you want to be while locked up. So oftentimes you ain't even believe when a dude tell you that he had a Cessna. But yo, hot sauce had that shit for real. And shorty, just like that country song goes, lived up to every lyric in that song. Just give it away. There ain't nothing in this house worth fighting over. Oh, and we're both tired of fighting anyway. Just give it away. Man, that was nice, Joe. You be singing for real. They have an American Idol auditions going on right now on TikTok. By the way, if you ain't following After Prison Show on TikTok, I highly encourage you to do so. Though the views may be low here, boy, on TikTok, she, shoo, shoo, you to think I got to own fans. You to think. I want to wrap this story up with this final paragraph that says, all things being considered, the case has more complexities due to the fact that some of the gifts were actually registered under Holmes' name like the car in the business. McDowell is seeking compensation for his assets he claims were his and punitive damages. You know damn well you watching Judge Judy. You ain't getting no punitive damage. Emotional distress? Nah, that's, that's dismissed. Your countersuit is dismissed. Judge Judy be like on a, on a zanny bar. 
Not really. She's wide open for being, what, 80, isn't she? McDowell and Holmes also share two kids, and he is set to be released from prison in 2023 in just two years. Folks, I want to know what you guys think about this story again. Pretty damn crazy. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. That's right. You make the most of every day. Peace. The buzz on in my favorite song is playing in a Broadway bar. Then you walk in and you're all alone. The hottest in the room.